guys, today I'm speaking with Amy Schwartz. She is not only the mama of six children, wait for it, ages 18 months to 18 years. Yeah, that's right. She also owns the local Stroller Strong Moms here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. If you've never heard of Stroller Strong Moms, it was started in 2011 by a military spouse named Alexa Smith. Here we stand eight years later. There are 23 locations open in military communities, as well as the option for virtual participation. This is a big, big deal for these women who are wearing a lot of hats. For example, when their husbands are deployed, one of my Zaya teammates really relied on her sisters in Stroller Strong Moms there at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas to get her through a deployment and a new baby and also work on her fitness at the same time. It's an inspiring group and Amy is an inspiring woman. Check this out. All right. Well, wonderful. I have got Amy Schwartz on the line. Amy, welcome to the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I've got to know first. I mean, we met in a gym. So our relationship, like you're you're into fitness, you teach fitness, you are the fitness girl. Tell me when that started, though. When did your relationship with health and fitness and exercise begin? So in sixth grade, I um, had no interest in playing sports, but our school did a cake run for um, all the grades to come together, and the winner of each um, race got a free cake, and cake is my love language. It has always been a love language, <laughs> and I was the female winner, and I got to go home on the bus with this ginormous cake, and instantly I realized that running might be something I was good at. I beat all the other girls in the school and got a cake. So from there, I ran track all through high school and middle school. I swam all through high school. Um, I ran cross country and I just, I was good at it. And it's fun to be good at something that you enjoy doing. And so I continued um, running through college and then had um, five kids in eight years and the pregnancies weren't easy and stopped exercising completely and realized that I was missing a huge piece of my life during that time but wasn't motivated enough to, to change or fix it. So I would go out for an occasional run around the block and come back completely winded and and realize like, Oh, this is really hard and this isn't fun anymore. And, um, and it took a long time to recognize why it was hard. Um, for something that had always, always come so easy for me. Why do you think that is like, I mean, first of all, five kids in eight years, like, Yikes. That's a lot. You're pregnant a lot for almost a decade. Yes. And, you know, my husband was in school and so there wasn't a lot of time and I just was not putting a priority on wellness, Um, Mm. emotional wellness, physical wellness, nutrition. And so trying to pick up exercise on a random Tuesday afternoon at four o'clock was hard because there was no discipline and there was no structure and I maybe ate 13 goldfish that day. Yeah. But it's hard to recognize in yourself when something's hard. It could be because you're not doing something you're supposed to do. Mm. So, do you feel like you felt any guilt? You absolutely. know, when we have these children, it's like, oh, the, our children are our world. And I hear you when you say priority on wellness. But then I also have a mommy voice in my brain that's like, yeah, well, how are you going to do something for you when you've got this needy child or children, plural. Absolutely. And I think we're trained um, or not trained, but it's so ingrained in us to put them first at all times that sometimes we neglect the importance of our well-being also. Mm -hmm. Um, And so after I made, after I made the realization that it was hard because I wasn't working hard at it anymore, I started to be really proactive about finding time to exercise. So right after my fifth child was born, I was diagnosed with several different autoimmune disorders that were wreaking havoc on my body. Um, My thyroid was shutting down. Um, I was having ray nods and all these different weird autoimmune disorders started kind of rearing their ugly heads. And I met with my doctor who put me on a high dose of medication or several different medications. But I went home and started researching and realized that if I was willing to change my diet and work out, that while I would still have to take medication, I would not have to take quite as much. Mm. And so I started to implement these healthier habits. I joined a CrossFit gym. I would take my kids to the park 
and let them play in the middle of the park as I ran laps around the outside of the park so that they were right there on the little playground. And that lap was like 0.2 miles. And I would run that lap over and over again so that I could get my workout in while they were doing something that they enjoyed. I've got to pause right there. You said something. You said it was hard because I wasn't working hard at it. And then I've got this picture of you on this 0.2 mile loop. It would be a lot easier for you just to sit on a blanket and hang. Yes. And it was boring. But you worked hard. Mindless. Yes. So I found a 10 miler race and made a goal that I was going to go run this 10 miler race. And so I did most of my training on that 0.2 mile grass path. <laughs> did you like have a, a GPS watch that told you how far you went or did you yes. set a clock and just say I'm going to run for a half cool. hour? Yep. No, I would do both depending on the day, but you no, know, I had my, my little fitness clock and I would run this loop and I knew that I had to run it five times to hit a mile and I would just run it and run it. And it was boring. And then I would stop and take care of my kids and, you know, one of them would fall or cry or fight and I'd have to stop and then just go back and pick it up again. Did you um, ever get any cake at the end? Always. I, <laughs> I always eat cake. Look, you are my people when you say that you're food motiv motivated. Oh. I, I'm making it a little bit light because, I mean, like, that's serious stuff. You're working hard. It wasn't always fun. Something I often remind people is discipline trumps motivation. Like motivation is pretty fleeting, but if you've got the discipline to do something like you're describing, run around that loop 20 times for your training run, that's what's going to yield the success, the race. How did the race go? Oh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I finished. But, yes. Um, yeah, it was not good. In fact, it was miserable, but I was very proud of myself. Did not think you were going there. Oh, it was horrible. So, <laughs> okay, we're defining success as an accomplishment. You finished. What What do you mean it, it didn't feel good and it was horrible? Okay, this is so embarrassing. I was so slow that when I came across the finish line, I had multiple people asking me if I was injured because they've been waiting for so <laughs> long for me to come. <sighs> Oh, but that's okay. Right. I finished. Yes. I finished. Um, yeah, but here's what I wish I had known at the time, right? Fitness as a mom doesn't have to be boring. Mm. And I didn't understand that back then. I thought, okay, I have to be a mom. This is the way I can get it done. I can't push five kids in a stroller. Mm -hmm. Let me just do this. I didn't understand that there was something else out there that would make it fun for me to be a mom and find fitness at the same time. Well, okay. So now look, we're, we're jumping, right? Let's I, jump. I want to definitely jump right into the Stroller Strong Moms pool. So, um, talk to me about, yeah, talk to me about fun and talk to me about the difference between running that loop around the track and then being in a Stroller Strong Moms class. Yes. So, um, when we moved to Georgia, we ran into this group called Stroller Strong Moms. And they, um, a group of warrior mamas who were out there every day with their kids, or some of them were pregnant. Some of them had empty strollers because their kids were in preschool, but I would see them every day and they were out there having fun in a group and they were working their tails off and they were sweating like a mother. And that's when it clicked to me that this is something that I can incorporate into my everyday life so that I can hit my goals in fitness and I can be a great mom. So, um, stroller strong moms is a program where you bring your kids to class or you don't if they're in preschool or, you know, I have pregnant mamas who don't have kids yet, but we work out with our kids and we work out with the support of a group and every day the exercises are different and the workouts are different and it's fun and engaging and hands-on and we motivate each other and it's a positive place to be. Oh, that So like, what does a class look like? So, right. So let's say I'm going to my first class. Um, like what are the first you know, five minutes look like? Do people hang beforehand? Does anybody run late because their kid wouldn't put their shoes oh, on? I mean, yes. walk me through what a your typical class looks like. So you pull up at the park. We're an outdoor boot camp. Um, as long as the weather is going to be above 35 degrees. So you pull up at the park and you unload your stroller and your kids and you throw everybody in, bundle them up if they need to. You pass out the snacks and you show up. And we start with a group warm up where we spend a couple of minutes chatting and warming our bodies up. And, and then we, um, we go run and then we meet at a section of the park and we'll do a Tabata or a hit or a, 
a chipper or and I'm going to stop you because look, we met in a gym. I speak your language <laughs> for the, there might be some folks out there. Look, I'm run lift mom, but I know some of my audience, it's just mom and maybe they want to oh, be the yeah. run lift part, right? Talk to me about what Tabata or chipper means. Excellent. Yeah. So a Tabata would be an, a workout where you have one or two or three movements and you're going to work for 20 seconds and then rest for 10. And you would go through that for several different minutes. And it's a great way to get those bursts of um, work in, and then you get a little bit of a rest and a burst of work and, and um, get that heart rate up. And it's just really fun. It's a really fun format. So if you've never done a Tabata, go set your kitchen timer and knock out Tabata squats where you're going to squat for 20 seconds and then rest for 10 and do that for four minutes. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's fun. It's short. It's intense. Um, a chipper would be something where you have something with a lot of reps. So maybe 100 of this and 50 of that. And you just have to grind through it and that, find your grit and just work it out. And love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying there. You know, I love um, Tabata. You know, I'm a runner. Um, and so like Tabata intervals on the treadmill are one of my go-to. Yeah. Fun story behind that, of course, is Tabata is actually the last name of a Japanese Olympic coach. He had skaters and he was trying to improve their aerobic capacity. And he found that with this 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for four minutes, he did a lot of research around it. He found that that gave his skaters a similar um, aerobic boost, right? Like from a fitness perspective, they were getting that aerobic boost in the shorter amount of time. And as a coach, he was like, yeah, I'm going to put them through the grind. I'm going to have them, you know, have less time on their feet doing these intense types of movements and then they've got that other time to rest and recover and do all the other things Olympic athletes need to do. Um, so yes. congrats for training your folks like Olympic athletes. We love Tabatas. Today was 16 minutes of Tabatas. We had four different ones that we worked through and it was not easy. Not easy. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you're doing a chipper, you're doing Tabata, you're doing some sort of interval work after that run. How about like, what if a kid has a fit or is crying or like, talk to us a little bit about like the behaviors in the class. What's the vibe like? It's great. So here's what's so nice about Stroller Strong Moms is every fitness, um, every fitness level comes to class. I have some moms who have never worked out a day in their life. And then I have other moms who were college athletes and superstars in their own regard. And everybody's kids have days. Today, my kid had a day and she cried the whole time. And we just take those babies and we blow bubbles and we sing songs and we try to keep them entertained and moving. But the great thing about being in an outdoor boot camp is we are so busy that the babies love watching us and emulating us and starting to, to do things with us. So if we're all hands overhead doing thrusters or, or putting those weights over overhead, you look over and you can see the babies with their arms overhead watching mama. And that is such a magical thing to watch happen as the kids come to class more and more frequently. But everybody's kids have bad days. And every day we every day that happens, we just take that little baby and entertain them. I'll hold kids as I'm coaching. Moms will hold kids as they're working out. And we make it work. See, that's the difference between... That, that right there is the difference between a mom's class and then just some class where it's okay to bring your kids. Bubbles, songs, the instructor is holding my kid. It's really awesome. It's really fun too. <laughs> that is so great. So I want to dig in a little bit about the modeling. So you mentioned, and I mean like modeling healthy behaviors. So, um, you know, a kid is, is acting like, you know, she's squatting and putting her, putting the weight over their head. As someone who has, I mean, I know that you've got um, a health promotion and exercise background, like your formal study is, is that you've got six kids from ages 18 months to 18 years. You've got a lot. Your experience does go wide in motherhood. And you see moms of all different fitness levels who meet with you multiple days a week. I mean, Amy, you're as close to a, like... <laughs> exercise mom expert as I'm going to get. Oh, Can you comment a little bit on the value of modeling those healthy behaviors for the next generation? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, we know that kids model our behavior and, and we know that when we want them to do something, we can tell them a million times to do something and they may or may not hear us, but they will watch us do everything. So things that we don't recognize that they're watching us do, 
we'll turn around another day and they're picking up their toys just like you've done 20 times. <laughs> um, so anytime that you're setting a positive example for your kids that they can see, whether it be eating your broccoli every night at dinner, y'all, I hate broccoli. I hate it, but I eat it in front of my kids and my kids don't know I hate it because I want my kids to eat their broccoli. <laughs> or if it's kneeling at your bedside bed praying, your kids are gonna watch what you're doing and they will model your behavior so anytime that you can set a good, positive example, they'll do it. So the other night we were sitting on the couch watching TV, kind of bumming around at the end of the evening and unwinding. And my toddler had been really sick with an ear infection and was not going to bed. And it's like nine o'clock at night and we're exhausted. And all of a sudden we're sitting there and she's throwing herself on the ground and giggling at us and then standing up and stretching up high. And after a couple minutes of her doing that, we realized that she was doing burpees. <laughs> <laughs> and we just cracked up because we have never said hey Berkeley throw yourself on the ground stand up and stretch up high that's a burpee but from watching moms do it every single day she knew exactly what she was doing and she was performing for us and she was waiting for us to be like good job baby you're doing awesome like she knew what came next that is so cool and you're right they are watching and absorbing all the time everything even things that's... we don't want them to <laughs> exactly. For for better or for worse, oh. they are watching and they will copy and mimic what you do. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so let's give them a good example, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, um, maybe I'm throwing you a softball here, but what what would your best advice be for new moms? My best advice for new moms would be to have grace with themselves, first mm. and foremost. Um. We have a lot of moms who come to us right after their first baby. Um, it's hard to come back to working out after you've had a baby. And we tend to be very hard on ourselves because we know what we used to be able to do. Yeah. Have grace. You're going to be exhausted some days and barely move. Other days, you're going to feel like a million bucks, do the workout and go home and not have the energy to take care of your kid, right? So it's finding that balance where you feel good because we never want to feel awful after a workout and be able to take care of our kid. Um, now, Amy, I, I want to interrupt you for a second yeah, or not really interrupt. I want to close a loop. So when you told us about your personal story at the beginning, you know, you talked about not being able to place a priority on, on wellness and some of the mom guilt that goes into that thought process. What would you say to a mom that's like, all right, that's cute to say, have grace with myself. But how about when this voice in my head is saying, not good enough? Oh, and we all have that voice, don't we? Yeah. Um, I think that that is the positive, not the positive. I think that's one of the coolest things about working out in a group, though, is when you're by yourself doing something like that, you let that voice creep in. Mm. But when you're out in a group. And you're walk, watching other moms and maybe you're not doing the best that you can do or the best that you feel like you should do. You have that support where you're just like, oh, that was really hard. Other people are like, you did awesome, though. Like you grind through that. Having that support to help build yourself up until you can remember that, you know, it comes back. And I am so I am so big on time and season. That is what I preach all the time. And so when my moms come in and have that bad day where they're just struggling with what they can or can't do, it's just a reminder of time and season. How'd you Do you mean like energy? a season of life? Like, right, right, right. Or even a short season, like a season of a week. Like my daughter's had an ear infection. This week has been a horrible season for me. She isn't sleeping. She's being grouchy. You know, my run game has been horrible this week. And, you know, it's having that grace where it's like, okay, this isn't forever. This is very temporary. And I'll get through it again because I've gotten through another one. And boom, with that mindset, this is just a season. It makes it a little bit easier to move past that adversity. And not as final. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Hey, I want to close this. So you've been a mommy for 18 years. Let's say you can go back in time and give some advice to your pre-mommy self before the last 18 years of six kids and goodness. You've got a lot of wisdom now. What is the one piece of advice you would give yourself? One piece of advice would be to love and respect what my body can do now. Because after kids, it's different. Your body changes. And even if you get back to that peak physical, it's just different. Your body just moves different. So love and respect what your body can do and does do. 
And then on the other hand, though, I'm going to say once that post baby body comes, love and respect that one. (laughs) Yeah, that is wonderful. I can't think of a better way to close this. Amy with Stroller Strong Moms, Fayetteville, thank you so much for gracing us with your wisdom and reminding us to love and respect what our bodies can do. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy, for chatting with me. That was really great. I know y'all fell in love with her when she said cake was her love language. And I hope you fell as deeply in love with her as I am when she said, yeah, motherhood's hard. Yeah, you've got to work hard at things, including your fitness, and make yourself a priority. My favorite part was when she reminded us to have grace. And if you take one thing from this episode, have it be this love and respect your body and what it can do no matter where you are in your fitness or in motherhood. Until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8 and this has been the Run Lift Mom podcast. Hey, Run Lift Mom listeners, you know I'm the mom of four kids under age five, and therefore, I am always looking for ways to work smart, not hard. Anchor is the smartest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. First of all, there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, but Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so then it can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole lot more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is quite literally everything you need all in one place. And y'all, it's free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's time for the Zaya Active product of the week. And this week it is the Black Pocket Light and Tight Capris. I recently had a customer who got her second pair of these, the exact same pair of pants. Y'all, I saw the order come through and I reached back out to her and said, hey, did you mean to do this? Because I'm pretty sure you already have these leggings. Yes, she did. And here's the reason why. She wanted a second pair of these because when her light and tights are dirty, she doesn't want to have to go back to her Lululemons. Oh, you guys, that made my Zaya heart swell. That's how great these pants are. So if you want to check them out for yourself, just find me on uh, any of the socials. Hashtag Run Lift Mom. This is the Zaya Active product of the week. Like what you heard? I am just getting started with the Run Lift Mom podcast. And as a newbie podcaster, it is really helpful for me if you subscribe, rate, and review. And to show you just how much I appreciate that, I'm going to be giving away a Zaya Active item of the week every single week during the month of February. I am calling this my Galentine's celebration, and here's how it works. If you have left a review, you are already in the drawing. If you haven't left a review, I would appreciate your honest words. So um, go ahead and leave a review. And then every single week, I'm going to be doing a drawing for that item of the week. Get excited. I'm new. Your odds are good. I want you to experience Zaya as well as the knowledge our great guests are giving us about running, lifting, and momming. From the um, Stroller Strong Moms. Perfect. I am such a silly, and look, this helps me test the audio, So, but I have to ask you the question. Um, is it not Slam? It's Stroller Strong. Why do I think it's Slam? So when Alexa opened, she wanted a workout that was intense for moms, and so she did the first class as Stroller Strong Moms, and when she finished, she looked over at a friend and said, I am sweating, and somebody said, like a mother. And so Slam has become our tagline. That is amazing. Oh, I have to have you tell that. 